And what I want to do today is simply to, um, to talk about uh, the burden, the size of the problem with alcohol, a little bit about that, and then also to, um, to just go into mainly the policy issues I think uh, I'll be covering today, but uh, touching a little bit on how, um, how this um, impinges on, on clinical practice and also um, perhaps um, we can have a discussion about research at the end of it, but I, I'm mainly going to be looking at this from the, um, the issue of, of policy and mainly from the issue of, uh, of national policy. One of the problems with alcohol as opposed to smoking is that whereas every cigarette is a, is a bad cigarette, there's no such thing as a healthy cigarette, um, with alcohol it's, it's very different, isn't it, because um, alcohol uh, can be quite a positive thing in society. Um, in moderation, it's a social lubricant, it gets people together, it can um, make us all more friendly with each other, it can, um, but it's a delicate balance because you can soon go beyond that into uglier scenes and, um, and that's where the issue is. So uh, it, it may also be protective in terms of um, cardiovascular disease, uh, the, the Jeff famous J-shaped curve, whether or not that's still uh, is the case or still supported by the evidence um, is questionable. But anyway, you know, it's, it's, a, it's not quite like smoking, it's very different. So, <clears throat> and it, 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 it's a tricky one for the politicians. <coughs> it's a very popular a habit, uh, it's not universal, but it's pretty popular. And tinkering with policy, particularly tinkering with the price of alcohol, um, is, not a, is not a vote winner, that's, that's, that's for sure. So, um, it's something which is... Um, which is a bit of a challenge for the politician. Also, it tends to fall between different government departments because you've got a whole bunch of uh, policies around, uh, uh, around the criminal justice side of alcohol, which is the, through the Home Office, and then you've got a lot of stuff that comes out through the Department of Health. Um, so it cuts across the general course business, trade and industry, or, or biz business, as it's now called, Department of Business. So it cuts across the different um, government departments. Um, so I'll just say a few things about the size of the problem then uh, talk about some of the approaches. Um, and we all know what, so, what, the various, uh, uh, what the various problems are with alcohol, but it is, of course, about half of all uh, violent crime, um, a, 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 a similar proportion in terms of family breakdown, and, it's, um, and it has a lot of physical problems as well, as we know. So here's a, a list, don't need to go through this, but you, it has three broad um, uh, health effects, if you like, the acute effects, the acute intoxication effects, which are mainly around injuries, accidents, violence, etc. Then there's the, the chronic, the more chronic effects, the toxic effects on the system, if you like, uh, not just the, the brain, but also uh, the body, cardiovascular system, the liver, of course, and uh, plays a part in various cancers, particularly the throat and esophagus. Uh, so, and then of course there's the long-term dependency and the social problems uh, that go with the <coughs> dependency on alcohol. So those are the sort of the main areas. In terms of deaths, always easiest to measure deaths. Um, there you can see over the last, uh, that goes up to 2006, um, I think it's about um, 91, about 15 years. And um, you can see that there is a, uh, a rising problem in terms of uh, total death total deaths, we've got men, we've got different sexes there, men and women, but, but the problem, the, you can see Scotland up the top there, which is a massive problem, particularly Scottish men, which is um, a real problem. There's some levelling off, which is encouraging, uh, in the last few years, but uh, nevertheless there's a, there's a very, uh, 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 it's a generally ri rising trend in terms of deaths, particularly uh, m Scottish men. Um, if you look just at liver disease, um, and look at as compared with the uh, with Europe, well, uh, then you, you can see that um, you know we've got we've got a rising trend in terms of liver disease. Whereas um, just the, the, um, the countries Italy, Spain, and France, which hitherto had were, had very high uh, liver disease rates, uh, the rates are coming down quite dramatically. So, so from that slide, you can see that we are um, bucking the trend in terms of liver disease deaths. And there's a, a change in death rates since 1971 <coughs> for a number of uh, diseases, and you can see that what's happening there is that liver disease is the one that's really zooming up in the under 65s. So that's where the big, the, you know, the big problem is. That's the big growth area, if you like, in terms of uh, uh, physical disease from uh, alcohol misuse. Massive problem. And um, it's the liver people who are sort of leaving, leading the, uh, in many ways, leading the drive to do something about alcohol, um, because they're, they're, that's where they're seeing real problems. The collateral damage, as it sometimes caused, we've touched on already, but a whole range of different problems. 
where alcohol plays a part, a ma often a, mass, a major part. Sometimes uh, most of the cases are linked to alcohol. So it's a huge um, social <coughs> problem. Um, it's a huge problem for the health service. Uh, it's a massive problem on, for, for, um, for business and productivity. It's, 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 it's millions. And in fact, it's billions. This is a, an estimate of costs <coughs> of the National Social Marketing Council. Um, and uh, there you can see loss of income in informal care costing about £21 billion. Um, this is over a period of, of 12 months. Um, Health care costs uh, 3.8 billion. Social services, criminal justice system, 2.1 billion. Loss to productivity, absenteeism, etc., 7.3 billion. And then, if you can cost out the um, disability-adjusted life years of people, people's loss of, loss of uh, productive, healthy life, if you like, um, and it's, you can calculate that in various ways. But there again, it's another massive, massive cost. So it's a huge cost to society. No question of that. And yet, it's something that which is an increasing problem. Um, just a little breakdown of cost of the NHS there. You can see that the, the biggest costs are in the hospital, far and away. Most, um, that's in terms, of what, in terms of some of the chronic burdens. A and E is looking more at the acute burden. But there you can see some of those costs, how they, they pile up. Um, <clears throat> moving on to consumption. And that's quite a long, a long graph there. It starts at 1900 on the, on the, on the left there, so it's just over a century. And uh, you can see, although we have a massive problem today, uh, in, oh, in terms of consumption, or massive consumption today, it's actually, it is actually less than it was at the turn of the last century, uh, when the, you can see there was a, uh, a, a steady decline in appetite consumption. Sorry about this, I can't see the screen. <laughs> um, uh, a, a, a big deep spike downwards, as it were, a drop in consumption during the First World War, and then it picks up again after the war, into the roaring twenties, and all that sort of flapper period, short skirts and beads, <laughs> and uh, jazz, the jazz age, <laughs> um, but it, it, uh, it then drops, it slumps again, because we have the depression coming on, um, and you can see that that second slump is the, is the, is, is the depression, and then it kind of gets fairly steady. And then after the, the uh, Second World War, it, it, it uh, slowly begins to pick up again. Um, rises quite heavily during the 70s, mid 70s, and then it goes up from there. And uh, in the last year or two, those recent, uh, you can see where the growth is in, in, the, in consumption in the last few years. It's, it's very much in wine. Um, Beer is fairly steady, um, but it's, um, it's, it's wine. Spirits slightly increasing. <coughs> A lot of wine, um, cider picking up quite nicely, and then this ready to drink, these alco pops is a, a, one of the biggest growth areas in the, just in the last few years, particularly aimed at young people, of course. Um, sweet, colourful drinks, which uh, are a bit like fruit drinks, but of course with alcohol in vodka usually. So, those are the changes. Um, and if you look at uh, abuse, um, um, not which is a funny term, but I mean, basically over the, over the um, at least twice, the, defining it here as at least twice the sensible limit. It, it, it's a young people thing. Um, it's men more than women. Um, it rapidly, the abuse rapidly declines with age. So a lot of the problems and a lot of the policies <coughs> are aimed at doing something about young people's drinking, particularly binge drinking. But there is an issue with middle-aged drinkers who tipple away quietly at home buy a bottle of wine from Sainsbury's, sit there in front of the telly, tipple away. And um, there are, there, some of the um, problems with liver disease are seen in people like that who um, don't particularly go on wild binges, but uh, years and years of steady um, drinking of, of wine. Wine they sometimes think is quite it's healthy because it's maybe red wine, they think that's healthy. Um, it's nevertheless knocking off their livers and causing, causing problems. So we have to worry about that group as well. So it is a young per uh, the binging certainly is a young a young person's thing mostly. Uh, as we were hearing, it, 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 it is very much linked to consumption, uh, to, to price rather, affordability. Um, as 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 drinkers become more affordable, then uh, there has been a, an increase. Can't say that's cause and effect. It's just an observation. 
observation, but there does seem to be a link there. Um, here it's a bit more blatantly depicted, so that as the price of alcohol form, falls, the, uh, the consumption rises in a pretty closely mirror, Im mirror image type way. I mean, that's fairly convincing looking at that. Again, it's just observation, may not be cause and effect, but it's, uh, it, it's rather striking that um, the symmetry that you can see there. So it, do, it does seem on the face of it to be a link with, with price. So, um, so that's, the, that's a bit of the problem of alcohol. Uh, uh, what are we going to do about it? Um, so looking at sort of some of the broad, broad approaches. But before we do that, just a little bit about health behaviours in general. And this applies to alcohol um, as, as well as, well as any, anything else, really. Um, and looking at the various factors that influence people's drinking behaviours um, and, and the effects it has on their bodies, Obviously, there are inherent factors such as age, sex, and hereditary, and how we react to, ha to alcohol um, can be partly built in, so that there is evidence to suggest, for instance, that some particular groups of people um, are more vulnerable to, to, to the effects of alcohol, um, not only by virtue of, say, sex. You know, women's livers are more sensitive to alcohol than, than men's livers are, but also um, our, our size, our physical stature, has an effect on how quickly we become intoxicated. Um, but also our genetic makeup too. So particular racial groups, for instance, are more sensitive to alcohol, um, and it can affect their um, their, their physical um, make, um, health, but also their, their mental reactions in different ways. So there are all sorts of differences in there. So those are important. Then obviously our lifestyles are, are fundamental, and how we um, how we drink, how we treat drink, how how drink fits into our lives. And around that, perhaps most important in terms of alcohol are the social and community influences. It's the peer, a lot of the peer group pressure is crucial, here, particularly amongst young people, absolutely fundamental. And that's where the real problem is. I mean, this talk's uh, uh, called, you know, attacking the drinking culture. It is that, that culture, the social and community influences, which is the really hard nut to crack. Um, and that's where we, we need uh, more research, but also we need to find ways of doing that more effectively. Um, tempered by the, our lives, the way we live, our, the, the, our housing, our, our working conditions, our communities, our, our, our environments, if you like, all very important. And then, of course, the general um, um, much broader effects, including big policies, macro policies, like pricing, for instance, and availability. But you're familiar with that. That's the famous Dahlgren and Whitehead uh, um, rainbow which I'm sure you've seen before, but I thought it's rather nice animating it like that, so <laughs> get one band at a time. Um, work for hours on that, but anyway. <laughs> I'll go backwards if you like. No. Anyway. Um, <laughs> um, another way of looking at, um, at behaviours is, is, is uh, and I haven't got this animated one by one, but basically what I call the three E's, which is uh, in terms of trying to influence people's behaviour. Yes, we can... In, engage them on a one-to-one -one basis and try and say, look, you, you know, you may have a bit of a problem here. And much of general practice is aimed at this, spotting problems early on and trying to provide a brief intervention and perhaps refer people on if necessary. But engaging people, getting them to realise there's a problem uh, for themselves or their families um, or communities, um, and then um, getting them to realise that they ca can do something about it and then the second E is around the empowerment, which is providing the tools or the, uh, the confidence uh, uh, to actually make a change to their lives um, or their loved one's life. If it may be somebody who is um, wanting to alter some, their partner's behaviour, for instance. And around that's the third E, which is the one which goes into those outer bits of the rainbow, which is um, where we can alter the, the background environment where, in which people live and work and play and um, to try to... Um, exert um, a, a health-promoting, if you like, influence on people's behaviour.